Hi everybody, this is Mark Belzaret from Bergen Community College. I'm here today to talk about what equipment you need to get started in the welding program. Now, there's a bunch of different things that you're gonna need for this class, so please make sure that you pay attention. Let's start from the bottom up, okay? The first thing you're gonna need is a pair of work boots. Okay, they need to be leather work boots. You can't wear sneakers, hot metal falling, hot slag falling from your welding. You're primarily gonna be stick welding, so it's vital that you wear adequate protection for your feet. Okay, that's number one. Um, they can be steel-toed boots. These are steel-toed boots. These are brand new. These are by Caterpillar. I bought them online. Um, they're very lightweight for steel-toed boots, so uh, they changed quite a bit from the first pair of steel toes that I ever uh, owned. But anyway, you're gonna need some kind of a leather boot. They don't have to be steel toes, but they need to be leather. Anything that's plastic is going to melt, okay? Um, the second thing you need is to wear a pair of pants. Uh, I'm wearing a pair of regular Levi's blue jeans. Um, that's nothing special, except for the fact that they can't have cuffs on the bottom. Cuffs on the bottom of the pants are a catch-all for falling hot slag, falling metal, other kinds of debris, and you can set yourself on fire that way, and that's no fun, believe me. The next thing is, is some kind of a jacket. Um, this is one of mine that I brought to show you. This is a, a fire retardant uh, treated cotton jacket that has leather sleeves on it. This is excellent for stick welding. You can see, probably not on the camera here, but you can see that there's a lot of little pock marks from uh, slag and hot metal falling on here. So it protects your arms uh, quite a bit. I'm right-handed, so actually uh, there's more damage on the right-hand side because that's where it's falling. Okay, um, a less expensive alternative, although something like this is not real expensive. You can find something like this for around 40 or $50, certainly under $100, okay? You don't have to spend anywhere near that much money. The next thing is uh, a jacket like this. This is also a fire retardant treated uh, cotton jacket. Uh, these can be had for as little as 15 or $20, and I think this is an excellent choice. Um, any of the uh, cotton fire retardant uh, materials, though, don't protect you the same way that the leather sleeves do on a jacket like uh, I have over here. Um, and you can see the damage on this sleeve here uh, from years of being used, or maybe not even years of being used. In any case, um, it's perfectly okay to wear a t-shirt underneath uh, your jacket. That's okay. You're going to be hot. The problem is, is that unless you have a jacket like this that has leather, leather sleeves, um, you may have some material go through and uh, hit you on the arms with a jacket like this. So I would suggest that you wear something long-sleeved or better yet, something like this shirt that I have here. This is actually a fire retardant dress shirt or work shirt, if you will. Um, and this can be worn underneath a jacket like this or under a jacket like this. Um, of course, it does get a little warmer when you're doing something like that, when you're wearing uh, a long sleeve, heavy shirt underneath a welding jacket, but um, it's really not about long-term comfort, at least for this class. If you were working all day long uh, in the field or in a shop doing heavy welding, obviously, then uh, the heat accumulation that you are going to develop from welding is going to be an issue. But generally speaking, in the shop here and the amount of time that you're going to spend welding is not going to be quite as critical. Um, the next thing we need to talk about are gloves. And there's a number of different kinds of gloves. There's a number of different brands. Uh, basic stick welding gloves are something like this pair from Lincoln Electric. These are made very nicely. They are long gauntlet uh, gloves that have a very long gauntlet sleeve. I don't have very long arms, and these go almost up to my elbows or pretty much there, okay? Um, and these are very nice. Uh, there's a lot of different makes. I suggest the better ones are more comfortable because they have a lining inside. Um, they're going to be constructed a little bit better. The stitching is better, better quality materials, and they're, so they're going to last longer. But again, you know, find something that's in the price point that you can manage. Uh, one thing you should not be wearing when you're welding is a pair of these mechanics gloves, okay? And mechanics gloves are nice because they fit snugly. Uh, these are what they call a mechanics fast fit 
gloves, and these are really more for mechanics. Now, the problem with wearing something like this for welding is that these are made of entirely synthetic material. Uh, the palms do feel like leather, but it's fake leather, it's pleather, and uh, plastic leather, if you will, and this will melt. These will not give you the heat protection that you need, uh, either from the infrared radiation or from the hot metal that you're going to be working next to um, in terms of spatter and other kinds of melted things that could fall on your hands. So these are not an option for welding. My suggestion is that you get something like this. These are gloves made by Tillman. Um, they're inexpensive. You can find these online or in a number of different welding supply shops. And these are considered MIG welding gloves. Now you won't be MIG welding in this class, you'll be stick welding. But these are nice because the fingers are more contoured. Um, they're pretty well made. I've had these for a number of years and they've stood up really pretty well. They're dirty now, but um, this is after many, many years of use. Um, they fit nicely, they're comfortable. They don't have as long of a gauntlet as the previous set of gloves that I showed you uh, back here, but they're more than adequate for uh, MIG welding and stick welding in terms of spatter protection. So the Tillman MIG welding gloves are an excellent choice. A number of students in the past have bought these and were very happy with them. Okay, They give you a little more dexterity too than a heavy pair of gloves like these. Uh, these, these don't give you quite as much dexterity and that can be an issue for some people. Speaking of gloves, uh, with the pandemic situation that we have right now, um, you need to have some disposable uh, nitrile or latex gloves to wear. Um, and I have these in black, they come in a few different colors. It doesn't matter what color they are, as long as you have them with you. So if you don't already have a box of these, I suggest to go out and buy one. Um, you know, I forget how many come in a box, maybe a hundred or so, something like that, you know, 50 pairs. Um, but in any case, uh, you're going to need these too, okay? Because when you're using other equipment, we want to provide adequate protection for everyone against the virus. The next thing that you're going to need is some kind of a mask. Now, of course, we've all seen these masks, and you're going to have to have this in the shop when you're here working. Uh, any time that you are working, any time that you were in this space, you're going to need one of these masks. All right. If you have an N95 mask, like this one, this is a 3M 8214. There's a few different versions of this. Uh, this has all of the protective qualities that this mask has, except that it also is uh, uh, rated for metal fume protection. So that's what we're doing. We're melting metal in this class and we need some fume protection. So if you can get a hold of some of these, uh, they, they haven't been readily available, but if you can find some, I would suggest that you get them. But at the very least, you must have a mask like this or a cloth mask is acceptable also. But these actually do a better job because they are electrostatically charged, which helps to trap virus particles in them. Something I didn't know in the very beginning of uh, all of this going on and we'll talk about masks. So when I'm out, I wear a cloth mask, which is adequate for most situations, um, but I do have these too. So um, you must have some kind of a mask that you wear here in the shop when you're working with other people, welding and not welding, okay? So working our way up, the next thing to talk about are safety glasses. You need to have safety glasses. That's absolutely critically important. Safety glasses must be worn at all times when you're working here in the shop, no matter what you're doing. Even if you're not working, you must have safety glasses on because other people will be working and may generate hazards that could impact you, uh, both literally and figuratively speaking. Um, this is the kind of safety glass you're looking for. Uh, a wraparound style lens, molded plastic. They need to be a Z87 or better rating. That is an impact rating, an ANSI impact rating. Your welding helmets are not impact rated. So you could be setting your helmet to, say if you have an auto darkening helmet, you could have it set to grind mode and have the helmet down, but that does not provide you with impact protection. 
only with sparks and debris and whatnot. You need to have double protection. You must have safety glasses on. The type of safety glasses varies according to what your individual needs are. Some of you who wear prescription glasses and must wear them all the time might want to opt for a glass like this, which is much larger in frame size and will cover up a pair of prescription glasses. So if you wear prescription glasses, you need to wear something like this or a larger goggle, which ultimately gives you the best protection, but something like this is perfectly adequate. What you can't wear are dark safety glasses. These are actually my sunglasses. These are polarized and tinted, but they are safety glasses. These are designed for construction workers that are working outside or other welders or people that are working outside in very, very bright light and need also impact protection that a safety glass will give them. But this is not appropriate for working here inside the shop. There's just too much uh, darkness through these. You can't see that well. When you're welding, if you have these on under a welding helmet, it's going to effectively make the lens shade that you're using in your welding helmet that much darker. And it's going to be that much harder for you to see your weld. Okay, and if you can't see what you're welding, you're not going to be able to weld it. So, no dark shaded sunglass safety glasses. And then finally to the fun part, um, we need a welding helmet or hood, whatever you like to call it. Um, this is a very basic model. This is a Miller model, but uh, there's many, many brands out there that make something like this. It's a pretty flexible uh, molded plastic helmet. It has no auto darkening features on it. It just has the, uh, the headgear that holds it onto your head, and it's got a large viewing port. And this is very nice. This is an excellent helmet because the headgear is comfortable, it's very lightweight, and the adjustability is good, and it's got a large viewport. The disadvantage is, is it's not auto-darkening, and many beginning welders find the auto-darkening helmets to be much easier to get started with. So, you might have something like this. Now this is mine that is actually the same shell as the previous helmet I just showed you, the same flexible plastic. Of course, I painted this and decorated it so that uh, it was my own design. And this has an auto darkening filter mounted inside. Uh, this does not have as big of a viewport as the one I just showed you, but once you get used to welding, you find that the viewport size is not quite as critical as you might have thought it would be. Okay, so um, this is an older helmet. I paid a lot of money for this years ago. There are many other welding helmets that are available now that are auto darkening. I would suggest that you stay away from the absolute cheapest ones if you choose to buy an auto darkening helmet. There are some mid-priced ones and even some low-priced ones that actually are very good. And at the bottom of this video, um, I'm going to give you a couple of links to some products uh, that I think are a good, uh, a good choice. Okay, I have another uh, helmet at home uh, that I'll give you a link to uh, that has a larger viewport. It is an auto-darkening helmet. Uh, it's comfortable. It's reasonably well made, but not as, not as good as this is. Um, but it's a good value, and especially if you're starting out in welding. I know people that have 10 or 12 welding helmets uh, because over the years they have changed their uh, desires for what, they, what features they're looking for in a welding helmet, and also the quality of the products have improved tremendously over the years. Um, so, but anything will work, so, but you must have a welding helmet. Um, just to reiterate for a second and make sure that everyone is clear, you must have your own welding helmet. You must have your own safety glasses. You must have your own protection, either a jacket, a fire resistant shirt, something. But you have to have your own. We're not going to provide that for you right now because in this COVID-19 environment, everyone has to have their own equipment so we don't have any kind of transmission of the virus or cross contamination. You must have a mask. You must have safety glasses. I think I mentioned that already. You must have boots and you must have long pants, something like, like these jeans, okay? Um, there's other safety rules like, you know, if you're a smoker, you don't want to have any cigarette lighters or matches in your pockets. Uh, the infrared radiation can be so intense it can actually cause those things to combust. Um, you don't want to have that happen. 
uh, not when it's in your pocket anyway. Okay, if anybody has any questions about all the things that I've shown you in this video or anything else in terms of the equipment that you need, the PPE or personal protective equipment that you need for this course, make sure you send me an email, all right? And we'll talk more about it. Thanks, we'll see you soon.